All right, here we are with the new unit. And Miss Anna, Hello. our trainer here, yeah. pulling up the patient. Yeah. Or... Mm -hmm. So we're on our patient. We'll click OK. Click Capture Scan. We want to go to Pan. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Which is. Pan Digital X ray. Right there. Right at the bottom. And then Start Capture. Yep. And so here's our, our new uh, Twain that we'll be using. So just click OK or select. And then what's going to happen is we're going to look here in the top left-hand corner. The unit is going to connect itself. So it's going to go to a yellow to let us know that it's connecting, and then green for ready. And then once we're ready on the computer, now we can go over to the new interface, and we can pick what type of program we want to do. So here, if we kind of start from the top and work our way down, we can see that we're on the we're in pan mode right now. And if we wanted to go to Ceph, we would just press the Ceph tab, and that will show you Ceph in a little bit. But pan first, looking at the different programs we have, programs one and two are going to be your main pan programs. So one is going to be for your uh, mainly adult art, large arch, and two is going to be mainly for your your small pedo patients. Uh, just as a good rule of thumb, remember that we're looking more for arch size rather than actual patient size because the unit has automatic dose control. And automatic dose control allows us not to have to worry about KV or MA or picking patient size because the unit is going to sample the mandible and calculate density for each patient. So if we toggle between 1 and 2, it'll show us an example of what that image should look like. And then we just want to follow the, to the bottom of the screen and the unit's going to tell us what we need to do next to get it ready. So anytime you see where it says press the patient positioning button, that is this little guy right here, and I call him the pan man. So if you press him, and this is why you don't want the patient to enter yet, a lot of times it's going to have some sort of movement, especially when you're going back and forth between pan and Ceph in 3D soon. Okay, so now on my, the bottom of my screen it says ready. So now I know I'm ready to, to go ahead and position the patient. So before I, I position myself, I just want to go over what the touchpad looks like. So here is your main control for your column up and your column down. Here's your laser lights. This is a little, it looks like a light bulb that'll turn the laser lights on and off. You've got about 15 seconds before you have to, 15, 20 seconds before you have to use that. Yep. So I kind of show you. Uh, we've met Pan Man. This is a, an entry button, so you can use that a little bit easier if you wanted to position your patient. It gives you a little bit better view. Or if you wanted to press it right before you, you go out the room to uh, start the exposure, it kind of starts it in more of a, a start mode instead of making that first turn for the rotation. The last three buttons will make a lot more sense when we look at the laser light, but this is for your maxillary canine. So you can see three pictures. The unit will always default to the line on the maxillary canine. When the patient smiles, if that light is in front of the canine, if it's mesial, you'll press that button that it corresponds to. If it's distal to the canine, press the button that shows the picture distal to the canine. The light isn't going to move, but the unit is going to change its rotation based on where you tell the maxillary canine light is. And that helps with um, having the anterior area more overlap. It'll help spread those contacts open a little better. So it's a really important light, and I want to go over that uh, with you guys uh, when we do positioning. Okay, guys, so now we're going to go through the laser light positioning. And before I do that, I just want to show you, um, I, the, there's cubbies on this unit as well, and I went ahead and unpacked uh, those cubbies for you. So you have 10 uh, new bite forks. You have three rods, and this is different, um, I think, than you have on the 100. These are all going to be the same size now. And what that means is instead of having a short rod for your smaller patients and a large rod for your, your bigger patients, this is now there's a little compression um, bearing that you can move it up and down. So you don't have to worry about having short and long rods. This is, can fit each patient, and you just move it up and down in, in the chin rest. So I'll go back through just kind of PAN 101 uh, positioning training. Here's your up and down arrow that we just talked about. So I just want the patient to walk in nice and stretched and straight. Have them bite on the bite fork. 
hands on the handlebars and feet slightly in front of the hips. Just a couple tips or tricks here, guys. If you need the patient, if you're worried about shoulder clearance, you can always cross the arms mm. and pull their shoulders down. That helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. And then remember, too, because this unit is ADA compliant, you could always put a patient in the chair and then move the chair legs closer to the column to help alleviate uh, shoulder clearance issues. So I'm just going to move this down just a little bit because I started off a little too high to talk. <laughs> uh, but if we've got our, our three lights that we work with, the first light, if everybody can see this on my, on the, my face, is the mid-sagittal light. It's located right above the mirror cover, and what that does is allows us to make sure that we are symmetrical on each side and the patient isn't twisted in the pan. So as they be biting on the bite fork, you look at the light and have it cut right through the middle if you can err on their philtrum. The philtrum is gonna be the philtrum is gonna be the best way to be able to uh, gauge that uh, symmetry for each patient. Don't go by the nose, no one's nose is perfect, especially when you've got a laser light on it, okay? So this is a very important light mid-sagittal. The next light, I've obviously be biting on the bite fork the whole time. The next light is gonna be the Frankfurt horizontal light. So this is a lever located to the right of the mirror cover and it goes up and down. So just start with it kind of at the base of the patient's orbital notch and move the unit down so it's at the top of my tragus. Do I look pretty top of the tragus? That looks pretty top of the tragus. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Thank you. Nice. And the last light is going to be the maxillary canine. So I'm going to bite on the bite fork and make and give a big smile. Okay, looks like you're right on. Okay. In the middle. Great. So I would be on the canine. So the picture shows it on the canine. Guys, I am not concerned with it. Is it mesial to the canine or distal to the canine? I'm literally when I'm looking at this graphic this is one full tooth in front of or behind so it's a quick peek and just tell the unit if it's in front of the canine behind the canine or on the canine and now let's go ahead and lock me into place so the white buttons here at the top everybody can see those that traverses the headrest back and forth so we want to have it just gently touch the head and then the black dial nice and tight you can't hurt me one last peek at my mid-sagittal to make sure that when I tightened this, this up, it didn't move off my, my philtrum. Bite the bite fork. Lips around it. Swallow. Tongue to the roof of the mouth like peanut butter. And then go out and take the exposure. All right. All right. Okay. okay, guys. So just a, a couple things on the interface before we move over to uh, taking a Ceph is programs one and two are gonna be your mainstays. We talked about the, the large arch and small arch for your pans. But just as a reminder, uh, like on the 100, there's a lot of specialty programs. So uh, three is an ortho zone, four is an orthogonal, uh, five, I just wanna park here for a second. Can you see how it changes the, the arch? It kinda of changes the focal trough. That would be great for a very wide mandible patient or more of a really uh, an aggressive class three patient. Uh, that makes sure that it's going to capture all that patient's anatomy. Six and seven are TMJ shots. And you can see that it's showing you the image change. Eight's a maxillary sinus. And then nine is a bite wing program. So kind of the, the nice thing about programs all the way one, two, three, four, five, and eight, if ever the doctors want that program, it's the same way to position like a pan. Six and seven are uh, the TMJ shots. There are some different positioning and different positioners. So if you want me to come back and show you that, I can. Uh, that's easy, and I'll be back for 3D anyway. And then nine is a bite wing program, uh, just so you kind of round out what it is. Uh, if you ever wanted to send a, a suspicious area back to maybe one of the one of your generals, so. Uh, but that kind of rounds out what the programs are. Uh, just wanted to show you too when we're in all the pan programs, we're on A for automatic. M would be manual. So manual would allow you to change the MA and KV for the patient. I wouldn't recommend it in pan mode because let the unit do it for you. And then T is a kind of a, a neat one and it'll be great, especially when you're uh, working with kids, is that you can see it takes all the values down to zero. And why that's important is that that allows uh, maybe the, the, the child, the parent, all in the same room together. You can press the exposure button, they can see what's gonna happen next and there's no radiation exposure. Just as a reminder, once you're on T, you have to physically put it back on A to get it back to having automatic mode. So if you have it on T, 
and you're wondering where the pan's coming in, it's because we're on test mode and there's no radiation source. So if everyone's kind of comfortable, I'm going to move on to, to show you how to take a Ceph. So we'll go to Ceph mode right now, and you can see the interface changes. So this will show you a partial um, Ceph. This is your lateral, and this is a frontal. So if we stick to laterals uh, for today, you'll pick the lateral mode. And then on the Ceph, because we can't do the sampling of the mandible, we have to pick the patient size. So on this, we'll have uh, different patient sizes here, and it always is going to default to an average size patient. And that is good for, I would say, all your adult patients. The only time I want you to go up one in size, if it's a really large, large patient, broad shoulder, no neck, uh, you may have some of those patients in, that you're thinking of right now. But as a majority, it would be for this is your all your adults. I'd recommend this for your adolescent patients, but just keeping in mind, you know, if it's a, a big kid that's coming in, uh, you know, you would go up to the average size adult. And the last one I'd recommend for your, your earliest of patients for Seth, and that may be your seven, six, seven year olds. So, uh, but kind of those are generalities and rules of thumb, and you guys, you know, kind of know how to use, do that part already. So we'll just have it back here just for demo sake. And then we'll follow the instructions at the bottom of the screen to tell us what to do next to get the unit ready. And it says to press that patient positioning button, which we just learned is the pan man. So we'll go ahead and press the pan man. And it's setting up the sensors and the collimators in the correct position to take a set. You can remove the bite fork and rod if you wish, but there's really no no need to do that. Um, there's nothing that actually gets it in the image from that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and position for Seth. And a couple things I just wanted to show everybody here. Uh, first thing that's important is where your break is, and it's the same on the 100, but this will allow it to open and close the ear rods. Right here. Here's your nasion support. Just make sure it's all the way out, you know, comfortable for the patient. This can flip up as well, and just make a note that you know you definitely before you start a stuff ever, you want this all the way down, or the collimator right here will get in the way of that. And then on your touch pad is right here on the collimator, and that'll allow the unit to go up and down. So to position for a Ceph, we want the patient to walk in. And you're kind of eyeballing where that patient would be. Nice, wide, comfortable stance because there's nothing to hold on to. And we kind of know where the ear rods are going to be. We take the, maybe a little help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a hard one to do myself. That looks about right. Take it off the brake and gently slide it in so it's comfortable, tight but not too tight, hands at the side, and then we're going to go ahead and adjust the nasion. So right where the eyeglasses or sunglasses would be, and pick, have the patient just pick a, a spot on the wall to, to gaze at, and this is called natural sight. Bite on the back of the teeth, and go ahead and walk out and take the exposure. The patient doesn't have to swallow or have the tongue to the roof of their mouth. Just comfortable and hands to the side and standing still. Okay guys, so the last part I'll do today is going to be going over just some troubleshooting things and then also maintenance, proper care and feeding of the new unit. So uh, just one thing to point out, not that you would ever have to, to unlock this, but crazier things have happened. There is a lock on the Ceph which allows it to be able to rotate uh, and move. To, to take different types of cephalometric projections. So there is a, a method, that a reason why this is behind it, but mainly you'll be taking lateral ceph, so there's really no reason to ever have it uh, moved. If it does, just um, if the lock's here, and make sure mm -hmm. it's in the proper spot for the lateral ceph, you'll feel it, it, there's actually a groove in it, and then lock it, and so it won't, it won't move, and it'll stay in place and not move. And then if you want, let's go ahead and, I'll just go over just basic maintenance of the new unit. I did ask uh, to just have a, a, a piece of barrier tape on your touch pad so you can wipe that off during your day uh, so you're not wiping down the touch pad. Any place that you were kind of wiping uh, before on the 100, the hand rests here, 
your chin rest, uh, your temporal supports, it's all fine to, be, to wipe, be wiped down. Remember, however you've done this in the past, the, the white forks can still be autoclaved, cold, sterile. You can do anything you want with them. The rods, just as a reminder, can only be wiped down. Okay, we can't sterilize those. And then if you can, just refrain on any of the, the actual sensors, so any of the sensors here on the set, and the collimators right here on the set and then on the pan, if you don't, just don't wipe those down. There's really no reason to, and the only thing that happens is over time it can create a film, and then you just don't want to have that start degrading any type of the image quality. So the unit can live on all day, and I'll just show you really quick. There's the on-off switch here uh, in the, on the left-hand side. So first person here in the morning, turn it on. Last person here at night, turn it off. It's going to ask you to press a button to complete the startup. And what that means is any button on the touchpad on either side, go ahead and press that and walk away for the, until you're ready to take your next pan and set. The unit will do its thing and it'll be ready for the whole day. Okay, hello everybody again. So uh, now we're moving into the 3D part of the OP3D Pro. So I'm going to just go through kind of, you know, top to bottom how to uh, get the uh, patient ready in the new software. It's going to be ClinicView. And then on the interface, uh, what the new buttons mean and then how to position. So if we uh, just come over here to the computer, there's a new piece of software that we installed. It's called ClinicView. And all we're going to do is just double click on it. And we're going to launch it and we're going to add a patient's name in to... Um, have the unit connect to the software. So if you have a, a patient that you've already taken a 3D scan on, we can go to search. Or if you want to go in and have a new patient created, just go to new. And then put in their last name and first name. Test, test for now, and then just click save. So our patient is highlighted, we'll click open. And now the patient's name is in the top left-hand corner. And we can see down at the bottom here, our unit is getting ready to connect. So just remember, like we did on the pan, every time it says ready, now we're ready to go to the unit to pick the program we want to use. So now we've got the option for pan, 3D, and Ceph. Remember, pan and Ceph is still going to be used in your Dolphin software. But now we're going to use the 3D tab to get the patient ready for a 3D scan. So just as a reminder, as a good rule of thumb, just remember to read the bottom of the screen and it's going to tell you everything it needs to do to get the patient, uh, for the unit to say re ready so you can have the patient enter. So I'll start at the top and I'll work my way down and just kind of go through what all the new uh, buttons are. So on this unit, we've got a 6x4 and a 6x8. So this allows you to have a small field of view, which would be good for one or two teeth, or a 6x8, which would allow you to have both arches uh, scanned. Once you've determined the field of view you want, you can go to the scout shot, and that will take a low-grade 2D image to show you what the image is going to look like before you take the 3D. Or you could go ahead and pick the resolution that you want and continue right on to the, scout, or right on to the actual scan. If everybody can notice this next uh, little button here, which looks like a tooth, that is the metal artifact reduction button, and that is allowing the unit to create a unique algorithm to help reduce noise and scatter for uh, the scan. So I turned it on for you. Uh, just make sure that, you know, quick peek every once in a while that it's still highlighted. This will help you get the best image outcome uh, and help reduce as much noise and scatter as possible. So if we've picked our, our field of view, we've either taken a scout shot or just picked the resolution. Resolution is low dose, standard, or high. And the doctors will let you know what type of resolution scan they want. So just you just need to know that the first, uh, first image is low, second is standard, and the third is high. So as we can see here, if we have a small field of view, the circle on the arch is smaller. If we go to the larger field of view, the circle becomes bigger. And now we can place anywhere on the arch where we would like to have our image scan, our patient scanned. So to do that, you could use a stylus pen, which we talked about, 
or you can have it just placed anywhere by using your finger. And then the, the, the icons on the top represent the scan moving from the left or to the right. And then the, below that is going up and down to fine tune it. So depending on what they want to see, the doctors will let you know where to put it on the arch and you can either take your finger, a stylus pen, and then fine tune where you want the scan to be by just moving the arrows left and right or up and down. I just want to make a note too, um, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see how it has different patient sizes and the letters M and T are um, highlighted. So this represents M for manual and T for test. So if it's on M for manual, just like when we're taking the Ceph portion of the, of the unit, you'll have to pick a patient size. Remember, it's always going to default to an average size patient, which is really good for, for many of the patients that you'll see. But if you do need to increase one in size to a larger patient, broader shoulder, thicker neck, just more dense, go up one in size. If you're not having an average size adult patient and you're uh, taking a scan on a child, I'd go one. If you did want to take it on one of your smallest of patients, go down to the smallest manual adjustment. Uh, but again, it'll always default after you take the scan back to the average size patient. If we're ready for this part of it, we'll just read the bottom of the screen and it tells us to press the patient positioning button. And just as a reminder, that's our little guy right here, we call him the pan man. So press this button. And once the interface says ready, now we're ready to have our patient enter. Okay, so now we've got the patient ready uh, to take the image, and we're, I'm going to show you the, the new laser lights and how to use them on the, on the unit itself. So the same up and down arrow still applies. Here's your, your arrow up, takes your column up, arrow down, takes your column down. This is your laser lights on and off, just like on your pan. You know Pan Man, that's your return button or any time on the interface that it says press the patient positioning button, that is your Pan Man right here. You've got the maxillary canine light. We don't need to worry about that for 3D, but we will use our the motorized chin rest up and down. And that's only activated within the 3D portion of the unit. And then this unit is a return button. So before we walk away, we let our patients know that we're going to um, take the scan, press the button, and then it gets it ready uh, to go ahead and take the, the actual 3D scan. So positioning for 3D is really easy. As everyone can see, there's a, a horseshoe now instead of the, the chin uh, bite block and uh, fork that we used to use. So bite uh, fork and block would slide out, horseshoe slides in, and the idea is that you just want the patient to be comfortable. So bottom of their lip to the top of the positioner, slide it in the horseshoe, have them walk in nice and stretched and straight, hands on the handlebars, feet slightly in front of the hips. So now in the 3D portion of it, you can see that the, the lights are a little different. We still use our mid-sagittal light, and that's the light that we want to have the, the light cut right through the middle of the patient's philtrum. If the patient isn't correctly in this light, either move their face or ask them to have it cut through the middle of their lip. If the lights go off, just go ahead and press the button and turn the lights back on. So if you wanted to manipulate the area of interest, now we're going to use the motorized chin rest. And remember, that's the buttons on the far left hand side to move it up and down. So I'm just going to show you um, how, we, how we do this. So if I want to have my field of view raised up, if I wanted to see a maxillary sinus, for, for uh, example, I'm going to actually move my chin rest down. So I'm going to press the button down, and I want you to see how the lights are changing into the area of interest I wanted to see. Can everybody see how that the chin rest moving down brought the field of view up? So if I keep doing this, you know, you can kind of see I'm starting to scrouch down like a little bit, and I'm, I look a little uncomfortable. If you see a patient look like this, no problem. Just take the, the unit and move them back up to a comfortable position. The lights on the field of view on the 3D are fixed, meaning they don't move. So you just have to keep the patient in a comfortable position and the field of view lights will stay the same.
Conversely, if I wanted the field of view to be moved down, I'm going to move the chin rest up. So again, we're starting to get that patient into an uncomfortable position. So we'll just move the unit down to put them back in a comfortable position. Once you've created the perfect uh, area of interest by using the laser lights, now I'm going to lock myself into place. Just like we did on uh, the pan, the white buttons, move it back and forth. The dial, nice and tight, will move it tight to the patient's head. And as a reminder, if you have a smaller patient, you're able to use the telescoping feature. So it's located at the top of the headrest, and you can press the button, and it'll telescope down for smaller patients and make it easier to lock them in. Once we're locked into place, uh, if you want to have a, an open occlusion, just go ahead and put a piece of cotton roll in the you know, middle of their bite to hold that open and just have the patient uh, just comfortable stance while they take the image. So once you have the patient properly locked in place, you don't have to have them swallow or keep the tongue to the roof of their mouth. Just keep them nice and comfortable in their stance, walk out of the room, and hold the button down for the whole uh, procedure. If you do a scout shot, hold the button down until the, the scan ends. You're going to notice the scout shot on the interface and also on your computer. When you're ready to, uh, if you're okay with the scout shot, there'll be a save button in the top corner that will press the button and then you can go on to take your scan. To complete the scan, just as a reminder, you'll need to press low, standard, or high resolution to take the, th the true 3D image. If it's just left on the scout shot, you're only going to take scout shots, so make sure that you press whatever resolution you want to take next. After you've done that, the image will close and then it'll automatically open in vivo your rendering software.